There, it's recording. All right, so if I give you this same chart here, or the same sketch of the curve of a bell shape on the chapter two test, you should be able to fill out the areas very easily. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you guys. So that's the first thing you'll be doing maybe in a test. It depends where I put it on the test. So I'll go ahead and do it in red. So you know this is 68%. You know that this one is going to be, how much is the next one? 95%. And you know this one here is going to be 99.7%. Now you're not off the hook. I would also like you to put in these smaller percentages here. 13.5, right? And this is all or nothing. You mess up on any of this, you, you don't get any credit. All or nothing. And I think that's, that's good. You should also realize that at this point, if you don't know why there's 0.15 left on each, I don't know what to say. What happened? A failure. Emily? Yeah. All right. Is that, I think at this point, we shouldn't worry about the, and this is called the empirical rule, by the way. The empirical rule. Some people want to call it the 68, 68, 95, 99.7 rule, but I don't call it that. So I think that's pretty easy. So the next question is a z-score type question. Now, on the last test, what I asked you for the z-score was whether it was unusual or not. And it was two or greater. If a particular score was two or greater away, standard deviations away, because that's what a z-score stands for. The z-score stands for how many standard deviations a particular score is from its respective mean. Okay? So if it's two or greater or negative two or smaller, it's too far away, we say it's unusual. However, in this question, I'm not asking that at all. It says her Pepita got a 95 on her English test, but an 80 on her physics exam. The mean and standard deviation for the English test was 80 and four respectively. So what you would do here, the way I would do it, is I would put here English and somewhere over here physics. Up to you, your style, how you want to do it. And she got a 95 on English. So her X for English is 95. And her X for physics is 80. Those are the scores she got on her test. Now it says there, the mean and standard deviation for the English test was 80 and four respectively. So the mean, the mean was 80 and sigma, the standard deviation was four. While for the physics exam, the mean and standard deviation was 70 and five. So for the physics, the mean for the class was 70 with a standard deviation of five. Right? So it says they're using these scores showing which subject test did Pepita do better as compared to the rest of the class. Show all work. Now, here's the thing with this question. Usually the way the question is done, obviously from a score, from an absolute score, she did better in English. She got an A in the test for English or B for the test in physics. But sometimes that doesn't tell the whole picture. This particular question, I didn't set up in a way to, to show that difference. What I wanted to do is to do the Z-score. 
So what you're supposed to do is here's a z-score formula. And so you take 95, subtract 80, and divide by 4. So that comes out to basically 15 divided by 4. If we do 15 divided by 4, you get 3.75. So that means that that English score she did is 3.75 standard deviations away from the mean of that class. So she's way out there. She's way up top and compared to everybody else because most people got an 80. A lot of people got 80 or around 80. For, for the physics, you would do the same calculation. It'd be 80 minus 70 divided by five. That'd be 10 divided by five. It's two. So he's only two standard deviations away from the mean. So in which test did she do better with respect to the class? English. She didn't, she didn't better in English. I mean, not only she got an A in English, but compared to the class, she was really that far away from everybody else. She did, she did well in, in physics, not bad, knowing that physics is a much tougher, 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 tougher class than English would ever be, right? <laughs> Don't say that to the English teachers. But it is, it's a very difficult class. And so, so she did better, comparatively speaking, here. And really, with z squared is all we have to compare two different data sets many times. For instance, you might want to compare, and, and nobody tells me they can't see anything. So, I mean, you saw some of it, but so there we go. So like maybe you want to compare the SAT and the ACTs. They're on two different scales. So what you would do is you would compare each score with the respective mean and standard deviation. Does that make sense? Maybe it doesn't. So I'll just show you an example. May I move on guys? You're still copying. Yes, of course. I never took my ACT. I was, once I took my SAT, I was like, that's it, I'm done. I don't want to take any more tests. Okay. It's, I thought the SAT was a difficult test. I got an 1180. What did you get? I, I, I wasn't too happy with the score, but I was happy enough that I would never ever take it again. <laughs> Really? I didn't make sure the door is locked. Daddy, please pardon this interruption. This is a code red announcement. Thank you. This is a code red announcement. This is a practice drill. Again, this is a practice drill. Thank you. Since I'm recording, we're going to do the code red. But I should have to. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's say, let's say you got an SAT. The average SAT score is about, I'm going to be kind, I think it's 1,100. And you guys got, I don't know, you never tested. Let's just say you got a 1,220. A 1,250, okay, 1,250 is fine with me. But a standard deviation, let's say a standard deviation is 150. I'm not sure if that's true, but let's just say it's a standard deviation 150. All right, now on the ACT, let's say the average score is a 24 or 25 with a mean, let's say that your score is a 30 and the standard deviation is two. Now we got two completely different scales here. And the question is on which test did you do better? So the way you would, you would analyze this is you would say the better score is a score whose standard deviation, whose score is uh, the more standard deviations away, who has 
or on average is farther away. I don't know if average is the best word. So we're gonna do our score, subtract 1100 divided by 150. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a Z score for that. Let me open my calculator here. 1,250, oh, let me go back. Minus 1,100 and take that and divide it by 150. And it's going to be one. So this is exactly one standard deviation away from its mean. Okay. So now we go to ACT. I'll do it in blue just because. So here we go, blue. We take 30, subtract 25, and divide it by two. So this is five divided by two. This is 2.5. So the ACT score. The 30 is 2.5 standard deviations away from its mean. The 1,250 is only one. So on which test did you do better? On the ACT. Because its particular score is two and a half standard deviations away from its mean, while the SAT is only one standard deviation away from its mean. Okay, but we all know the ACT is easier than the SAT. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, be careful. All right, are we good with this? Okay. Now, I am going to put this on YouTube. None of your teachers are putting their YouTube like, on, on, on their lectures on YouTube. Half inch teacher, what? They just give the full word. Every day, that's good. Uh, here's the thing with lectures: some people don't like lectures. I un look, I understand lectures are boring. Um, that's why I start. I I try to color the lectures with um, jokes and philosophy. But you gotta admit, it's true what I'm telling you. I know I'm telling you the truth. It's just, do you accept it? Do you accept things? If you accept it. Then all of a sudden you're funny, you let go of your attachments and you try your best for the collective good. I guess you'll be fine. All right, take a look at this here. We have a bunch of numbers there in order and I want you to find the five number summary and then I want you to do a box and whisker plot here, right? So there's different, I mean, you can look at the notes. I showed you four different cases on how to do this, this five number summary thingy. And so let's go ahead and do this one. So this was probably similar to the one that you had on your test. So how many numbers do we have there? Let me count. One, two, 22. Okay, so 22 is even, right? And so that means that the middle is going to be the 11th and the 12th number. So we split it in half. So that means that these, this one here and this one here are the middle two. So we're going to add those two and divide by two. If we take 79 plus 80 and divide by two, what do we get? 79 plus 80 divided by two, that's 79.5. Agreed? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and write here 79.5. Now, this is split the data into the lower half and upper half, and we have 11 numbers in each. Agreed? So now, 11, is it even or odd? Odd. So therefore, we're just going to have the middle number. 11 plus 1 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the first quartile. And then we'll start in here at 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is the third quartile. And so now we have that the first quartile is 37. The third quartile is 93. The minimum is five. The maximum is 123. Obviously, the range here, if I ask you for the range, would equal 123 minus five. So that's going to be what? What's 123 minus five? It's going to be 118. And now I want the interquartile range, IQR, interquartile range. You would take 93 and subtract 37, right? What's 93 minus 37? 
I agree it's 56. So there we have it. So you got your five number summary and you can use your five number summary to do a box and whisker plot. So let's go ahead and create a box and whisker plot. Now, first thing you have to do is your number line and then you decide on, the, on your scale. Now the numbers range from a low of five to a high of 123. I'm going to go ahead and just start with zero and increment in tens. Be careful. All right, so the smallest number is five. So we put a dot for five. The biggest number is 123. So we put a dot for 123. Let me move that dot a little bit up. Um, now, then we have a first quartile is 37. Then we have second quartile, 79.5. And we have the third quartile, 93. And then we connect those lines to make, oh, that's a squiggly line, 93. And the whiskers. And you're done. So, we discussed basically three questions so far. And these are skills that we've gone over in this class that we should know how to do. And then, you know, obviously you're gonna see again in college, aside from the fact that some of you can make the, the, the point that I'm not gonna use this in life. I wonder how many things you actually even use in life. What you're supposed to use in life is something called your reason. That's what you're supposed to use in life, your reason. And doing things like this will augment your reasoning capabilities because it forces you to think. Not this exactly, this is dumb. <laughs> this is easy, okay? Now, we might talk about, not for this test, but we already talked about what that middle line does, like what does, hey, what does the second quartile say about the skew of the data? That's where the thinking comes in. But for now, I'm just worried that you can actually do it, okay? All right, so now let's do the next question. We have a bunch of numbers here. I want you to find the mean, and then I want you to find the standard deviation. Here's the problem. You don't know how to find the standard deviation. If I asked you right now how to find the standard deviation, you wouldn't know how to do it. It's okay. You try to trip me, it's okay. All right, let's go ahead and do this together. But the standard deviation is the part where I know I've taught it. I know you've done a test on it, but I'm sure you don't know how to do it. So let's do the population mean of the above data. Let's assume that it's a population just for simplicity. And it doesn't matter for the mean, obviously, but for the standard deviation, it matters just a little bit. Just this formula changes a little bit. So let's begin. So the mean equals the sum of x divided by n. So if you take 5 plus 14 plus 14 all the way to 79, and then you divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you will get the mean. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on the calculator here. I take five plus 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus 37 plus 37 plus 45 plus 69 plus 72 plus 77, oops, 77 plus 79. I get 463 and we'll divide this by 11. And it gives me 42.5. And I'm going to go round it to one decimal place, 42.1. So I can just 
put squiggly equals here, approximately. So we had the squiggly equals, and now you have some information that you can use to find out your, your standard deviation. Okay. So we have 11 numbers. We're going to find the standard deviation. Remember, the standard deviation is the average spread of the data from the center, from the mean. So there's, there's, look at this formula here. You can't see it real well. For some reason, when I copy and pasted it, um, it didn't get the, the formula real well there. But I'm going to go ahead and write it here. Sigma squared, the variance, equals the sum of x minus the mean squared divided by n. And if you square root that, if you square root this whole thing, this is the standard deviation. That's what that formula is. Once it, once it comes up there on the board, because I'm still waiting for it. Come on, computer, you could, you could, you could refresh. Come on. All right, it's writing. It's starting to write, but it's red over there. No, it's not red. All right, whatever. I see it continues doing it. So we have x here. Yeah. It's about to do it. It's about to do it. There we go. So we have an X. And then we have X minus a mean. This is what we call our deviations right here. Deviation. And then we have our deviation squared. And those are the three columns you essentially have to do for this. And then what you would do is you would write the numbers down here. 5, 14, 14, um, 14, 37, 37, 45, I need more line, 69, 72, we're gonna run out of space before, 77 and 79. I should have 11 numbers there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So there we go, we have 11 numbers. And now I'm supposed to take Each of these numbers, I'm supposed to take each of these numbers and subtract the mean, which is 42.1. And then I'm supposed to square each of those numbers for the next column. And I'm supposed to add them. And then I have to divide it by 11. And then I have to square root it. And that's the process I'm following to find my standard deviation, okay? So it's, by the way, it's very easy to get this wrong because there's a lot of numbers I gotta put in there. So five minus 42.1 is negative 37.1. 14 minus 42.1. That's a negative 28.1. So I get to write that three times. Now 37 minus 42.1. That's negative 5.1. Negative 5.1. Then you got 45 minus 42.1. That's a 2.9. 69 minus 42.1 is 26.9. It went, it went to teams. It went straight to teams and it turned off my Microsoft whiteboard. Really? That's not cool. It's like the computer doesn't know its time is limited. And then when it's defective like this, we don't know what to do. All right, so now let me shift everything properly. But that was weird. It's almost like a ghost is here. Okay. Maybe the, the whiteboard has become self-aware. All right, so let's continue. So now we take 72 and subtract uh, 42.1, and we got 29.9. And now we have 77 and subtract 
and we got 34.9. And then we got 79 and we subtracted 42.1 and we have 36.9. And so now I got to go through all this trouble right now and square all of those. And remember, when you square a negative number, it comes out positive. So you need to make sure you put parentheses around a negative 37.1 or you just ignore it. So when you square negative 37.1, negative, 30, negative 37.1 times negative 37.1 comes out to positive 1,376.41, 28.1. And I'm ignoring the negative, so I just, I'm just in a hurry. I got 789.61. I do this three times. And then you got 5.1 squared. That's 26.01. You got 2.9 squared. That's a 8.41. 26.9 squared, uh, 723.61. Guys, I, I bought the Xbox. Series X? Uh, the Series X, yes. I'm, I'm get, I had to buy it as a bundle, and I'm going to give it as a Christmas present to both girls, which they didn't ask for it, but whatever. <laughs> Microsoft sent me an email saying that there's a batch coming in and because I bought a bazillion products from them in the past um, that they would put me in their thingy. So I just did it. All right. Now, two things I didn't talk to you about that I should be talking about, but I guess the self-awareness of the Promethean board stopped me from doing is you should always check that your sum of your deviations is zero. In this case, it's not going to come out to zero because we rounded the mean, but it's going to be very close. If you added all these numbers up for the deviation, you would find that the sum of your deviations here is negative 0.1. It's very close to zero. Now, when I add this up, these will be your sum of squares. Sometimes we write SS of X here, but we're going to add up all these numbers because this is the numerator of the formula for variance. So here we go, wonderful people. And again, I'm trying to get this done before 837 so that you can have this as notes to study. And so there's not much interaction going on between you and me. Yes, I am gonna put this on Teams. Very important that this be on Teams. I have not, is it good? I remember that I like the Halo games a lot. A lot. Is it a good storyline? No, campaigns are strong. It's not like seven. Okay. I have not played it. Yes. Is this the last time we're doing this? Yes, sort of. I mean, I might review after Thanksgiving, but for what? like for the test. Well, we, we took a test, but it was in section 2.5 and 2.4 empirical. But now I'm going to give you a chapter one test, which oh, is going to be the whole system. thing. Oh, yes. Okay. All right, guys, when I added up all these numbers, I got 8,002.91. I'm comfortable with that. So sigma squared equals the sum of X minus mu squared divided by N. This here is that. What's wrong? All right, so 8,002.91 divided by 11 will give you some number. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and divide it by 11. So we get approximately 727.5. Now, if I take the square root of this number, I keep it in memory in my calculator, it comes out to be approximately 26.97. You could write 27 if you wanted to. That's an answer, approximate answer, or 27.27 uh, 26 is fine. And that's how you find your standard deviation. However, this wouldn't be complete until I discuss with you the shortcut of this. The shortcut, the formula for shortcut is, I'll just write for the variance, is the sum of x squared 
minus the sum of x squared divided by n all over n. This is the shortcut. And it's worth that I take some time to discuss it. Because in about 10 minutes, I'll stop, but you'll have this. I'll upload this video next period. I'll put the notes. I think I already have the answers. I'll put the notes as well, but the notes wouldn't be complete. But by the end of the day, full notes will be on there. <clears throat> full notes will be on there. Look back at your memories. We'll watch that in a bit. I was, do, I was doing this mental experiment and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it when we're done. I think it's interesting. Um, so let's quickly take a look at that formula. This formula here says, hey, you need to tell me what's n. You need to tell me what sum of x is. You need to tell me what the sum of x squared is. So what is n? How many numbers did I have then? 11. So n is 11. Now, we might not remember, but did we add up all the numbers? Yes, and we came up with we came out with a mean, but what did the numbers add up to? 463. So right here, this number here is 463. So that means if you added, if you added 5 plus 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus 37 plus 37 plus 45 plus 69 plus 72 plus 77 plus 79, you get 463. Now, the last one means, hey, square all the numbers and add them up together. So if we take, and I, this, this is the part that I can mess up in, 5 squared plus 14 squared plus 14 squared plus 14 squared plus 37 squared plus 37 squared plus 45 squared plus 69 squared plus 72 squared plus 77 squared plus 79 squared and you got 27,491. And now we substitute all these things into that formula. In other words, this guy goes here. This guy goes here. And this guy goes here and here. So we write sigma squared equals 27,491 minus 463, but to the second power, divide that by 11, all divided by 11. Now, I'm going to take 463, I'm going to raise it to the second power, I'm going to divide that by 11, and I get the following number that hopefully comes out. I get so 27,491, and you can't see it, and nobody says anything, because you guys just want to get through the day, I understand, minus 19,488.1. Divided by 11. So in other words, 463 squared divided by 11 came out to 19,488.11. So now I take 27,491 minus this here. And so now when I do that numerator, it ends up like this, 8,002.91 divided by 11. Notice what happened now. Notice that this numerator here is exactly what we got there. It's the same thing. So using the shortcut, I was able to arrive to the same answer that we did using the table. And so now basically this is the same answer. So you're gonna obviously to divide that by 11. That is your variance. This here is your population variance. Remember, and I should take some time this is your population variance, which I wrote on the top. And this here is your population standard deviation. Now, you might not see that because I'll zoom out, but basically, this is what we have here. Okay, your population variance, your population standard deviation. Now, just to wrap it up, 
I need to emphasize the fact that you do also have a sample variance. The sample variance, your sample variance, you do everything the same. Except when you get to the end, you divide by n minus one. Your sample standard deviation is the same thing. You just square root what you got for the sample variance. Now the shortcut for the variance now is the same. You still do this, all the same. But now right here, divide by n minus one. So this would be the shortcut. Right. So I think that's it. So let me stop recording. Oh, no, 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 wait. <laughs>